Hey my dear champions, how are you all? I hope that you are doing wonderful. So yes, today we are going to talk about female reproductive system. It comes under human reproduction and this is a topic that I gave you and I also gave you five PYQs. Were you able to do that? If you were not able to do that, please do not worry. I am here. I will explain the concept as well as solve the question. But I definitely want you, want you to give a try and then see the particular video okay now i officially welcome you to score 360 out of 360 in need biology 2025 within two 50 days series so without further ado let's just begin over here the ncrt will be our best friend so please open your ncrt keep it with you we will study it line by line okay and i will be explaining the diagram first and then we will be reading it so that it becomes more easy for you to understand so let's begin the battle over here if this is the female reproductive system, I am telling that this is the most important part of the female reproductive system. This is the primary sex organ. What is this? This is the primary sex organ. Now, why do I call something primary sex organ? If it does the primary function of the reproductive system, I will call it primary sex organ. So, what is the primary function of the reproductive system? It is to produce what? The gametes. If the gametes are not there, will it fuse to form the zygote? Will the zygote now uh, divide itself to form the embryo? No. Human race itself will be stopped. So basically, we want it to be considered as the primary sex organ because it is responsible for doing the primary function of production of gametes. What type of gametes? Obviously, the female gametes, right? And what is a female gamete? The oocyte or the ovum is the female gamete. So this particular thing that you see over here, it is responsible for production of what? Gametes as well as the synthesis and secretion of ovarian hormones. Basically, I'll write hormones, hormones. And what is this particular structure that you see over here? What is the name of this structure? The name of this most important structure is ovary. Is ovary. And how many of them do we have? Two. A pair of them we have, right, in the female body. And this is primary sex organ because it produces gametes as well as the ovarian hormones needed for all the secondary sexual characteristics that a female has. Yes? Now we move ahead. So egg is being released by the uh, ovary. Now who is the one who is responsible for carrying the egg? It is the oviduct. And where is the oviduct children? This particular thing that you see from here to here, this particular thing is the oviduct. Okay, can I write it over here? I'll write it. It is the oviduct. And oviduct has a second name as well. It is also known as fallopian tube. Fine. Now, what is the use of oviduct or fallopian tube? It is responsible for transporting the gametes that are being found by the ovary. So, I'll just write transport as a function here. Is it okay? Will you be able to remember it? This is the keyword. Yeah. Now we go ahead. Where is this transporting the egg towards to? Okay. So basically over here, we have this very important region, which is known as uterus, which is known as what? Uterus. Now, why do I say that it is important? So for understanding that, I have to make you understand something else. That is during the copulation or during the sexual act, The male insert the penis inside the female genital organ or female reproductive tract. Yeah. Now over here, when ejaculation takes place, the sperm is being released and this sperm is carried towards the female reproductive tract. Where in the female reproductive tract? Over here. Because this is the place where the egg is present. That is, the egg which is transported via the oviduct, it just stays there in the oviduct at one particular region of the oviduct. And the sperm has to move towards the egg. Now, if the sperm and the egg fuses, it will result in the formation of what children? The sperm and the egg, the sperm and the egg, it fuses. What does it give? It leads to the formation of zygote. This zygote will undergo repeated division and will result in the formation of what? Embryo, which is nourished and nurtured in the uterus. So that is the major function of the uterus to provide a space for the nourishment and nurturing of the embryo which is going to be formed, right? So this is very important part. Now we go ahead. There is a flap here at the end. 
okay in the uterus region itself what do you call this flap as this flap is again very important you call it cervix what do you call it you call it cervix now we go beyond what is this particular structure that you see over here this is known as vagina okay what do you call this fifth structure this is vagina all of them they become a part of the female reproductive tract now ovary being the primary sex organ all of them will be what the secondary sex organ because they these are the secondary functions if egg is not made then what's the use of transporting something so obviously we need to do this so i hope this is clear to you now what is left so apart from these reproductive organs we females also need very important thing that is a pair of mammary glands and what is this used for obviously for child care for breastfeeding okay so all of them together it is responsible it is important for the pr process of reproduction as well as uh, post birth whatever things are there it's necessary for that as well so now let's read it i think now it will be more easy for you to understand the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries done ma'am along with a pair of oviducts done ma'am uterus and then cervix and then vagina and also external genitalia so external genitalia means what external genital organ so this will be the sixth point what is it external genitalia which is going to protect protect the whole structure so this structure that you see over here this is inside the female body external genitalia as the name suggests it is external thing okay it is present outside the female body you can clearly see it okay we'll come we'll see what's all in there as well okay now these parts of the system along with a pair of mammary glands are integrated structurally and functionally to support what to support the process of ovulation ovulation means what ovulation means what when the release of egg is known as ovulation so it helps in the release of egg ovulation fertilization where both both egg and the sperm meet uh, pregnancy yeah and birth and then child care okay i hope this is clear this is the what's a overview the simplest overview that i can give you now we go ahead we'll talk about ovary one by one everything in detail so again this is ovary consider this thing that you see over here to be the ovary i'll tell you the basic things first yeah the length of the ovary is around 2 to 4 cm what is it 2 to 4 cm now there is a very important piece of information how is the structure of ovary the structure of ovary is kind of like this where they have an outermost okay just a second mm -hmm. okay they have an outermost layer what do you call this particular layer any guesses anyone who have already studied the ncert you know do you have any guesses what is this particular layer known as children this is known as germinal epithelium what do you call it you call it germinal epithelium this germinal epithelium provides a proper structure to the ovary as well as it has indirectly responsible for production of hormones and something like that but it is not a direct effect which is why we won't learn it so germinal epithelium is there for the for providing a proper structure that can you remember i think you can right now inside the germinal epithelium there is one more layer inside the germinal epithelium children there is one more layer do you know this it is not there in your ncrt both these layers is not there in your ncrt but it will be really good if you remember the names so first one is germinal epithelium in ncrt they have just mentioned that there is an epithelial layer they didn't say the germinal epithelial layer okay so this is germinal epithelium and the second part of it is what which is inside it is known as tunica remember in test is also we learned it albu inia this is the second part now comes that is something that is there in your ncrt that is inside the epithelial layer there is inner region this particular inner region as a whole as a whole what do you call it you call this particular region as stroma so stroma is there in chloroplast that is something different this is something different okay so there is stroma now stroma again i can divide into two regions you might be thinking ma'am is going keeping on dividing 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 there's too much to learn it is easy trust me if you listen to this particular lecture very clearly you know it is going to get fitted in your brain mm. now over here 
The stoma, as I said, it's divided into two region. The inner region, what do you call it? Since it is inside, I'll call it inner. Okay, and the other name is medulla. So this inner region is known as what? Inner medulla. Now outside, what do you have? Outside this over here. Since it is outside, it is in the periphery. So I'll write the periphery word first. Or peripheral. Peripheral. What is this? Peripheral cortex. So outside we have peripheral cortex, inside we have inner medulla. What is the use of this? Why are we studying this? So basically, in the peripheral cortex, there is the main person that is the egg or the oocyte. But the oocyte cannot stay alone there. It's kind of scared. It always says that I need my best friend. Who, who is the best friend? These cells. Now you might be wondering what are these cells? What is ma'am teaching? So I know it will come in oogenesis but let me tell you. If I say that this black thing that I have made is oocyte or basically ovum. Over here outside this particular purple thing that I have made it is known as it is known as granulosa cells. They are best friends. Okay. Granulosa cells. They cover they surround the oocyte. Together I call this structure as a follicle. What do I say? I call it a follicle. So similar to it, there are so many follicles, different, different types of follicles. So now your egg is over here. Who will provide nourishment to the egg? It's if when it's there in the ovary, there should be someone who could take care of the egg, right? So that's the use of inner medulla, which is richly supplied in blood vessels as well as nerves, which provides all kind of nourishment to the growing oocyte. Okay, I hope you got this. So if I if I stay, stay from starting, what do we have? We have ovary. What is the length of the ovary? 2 to 4 centimeter. Okay. What is the outermost layer? Germinal epithelium. Inside germinal epithelium, tunica albuginia. Inside that, there's a huge space. What do you call this space? Stroma. Now, stroma, can you divide it further? Yes. I can divide it further into two regions. The inner region, medulla. The outer region, peripheral cortex. Okay. What's there in the cortex? The cortex is having the egg cell along with granulosa cell forming what? The follicle. Now, who is providing nourishment and everything to the follicles? Basically, the inner medulla is richly supplied on blood vessels and nerves. It will take care of it. Now, where is the ovary present? You tell me that. So, ovary, children, it is present where? So, just imagine this is a human being. I'm just making legs like this. Okay. This is where the heart resides. This particular region that you see, it is known as the abdominal region below your chest, okay, below your thoracic cavity. This is your abdominal cavity. Now, abdominal cavity can also be subdivided. There will be a lower region. This is where, in the lower abdomen, that is where the ovary resides. So, a pair of ovary resides on the either side of the lower abdomen. Will you remember it? It is, where is it present? It is present in the lower abdomen now lower abdomen is also known as pelvis region you can say it like that also but let's go behind ncrt okay this is the lower abdomen region i hope you got that as well now let's read ncrt ovaries are primary female sex organs we know that why because it produces gimme that is ovum and several steroid hormones that is ovarian hormones the ovaries are located one on the each side of the lower abdomen in the lower abdominal region over here one on the each side the ovaries are present each ovary is about two to four centimeters in length and is connected to pelvic wall and uterus by ligaments so this thing i am keeping on hold i'll explain it to you okay the rest of the things each ovary is covered by a thin epithelium it's thin epithelium what's the name germinal epithelium which encloses the ovarian stroma the stroma is divided into two zones peripheral cortex and inner medulla this is what is there in your ncrt i just taught you a bit things a bit of extra things that's all okay now the point that i halted okay it is that is ovary is connected to the pelvic wall and the uterus by ligaments so let's see pelvic wall and the uterus so over here you agree that this is the uterus and this particular connection that you see over here this thing it is a ligament what do you call this ligament as ovarian ligament ovarian ligament so your ovary and the uterus is connected via the ovarian ligament now there is one more task the ovary has to be connected to the wall the lower abdominal wall or the pelvic wall okay now this connection 
is built by another ligament what do you call this ligament as it is known as suspensory ligament what do you call it suspensory ligament will you remember it this is ovarian ligament ovary to uterus and suspensory ligament that connects ovary to the pelvic wall or the uterus wall okay so not the uterus wall pelvic wall or the lower abdominal wall i hope you got that as well now let's go ahead let's the see these are the notes for ovary just what is written in the ncrt if you want you can take a screenshot of this as well i hope until now it's clear okay now let's talk about the oviduct and as i said oviduct has one more name what do i call it fallopian tube okay it is known as what fallopian tube again we will see the diagram first and then we'll go ahead so this guy do you know who is he this is the ovary okay i cannot see he and all but just i'm saying okay don't mind now ovary is releasing what egg who is going to take the egg the oviduct how listen to me the first part of the oviduct okay it is this part you call this part as in fundi bulum what do you call you call this particular part as in fundi bulum and what is the characteristic feature of in fundi bulum it is funnel shaped okay you have to remember the character they might ask what is the funnel shaped structure so this is the characteristic feature that is it is funnel shaped now this particular part as you can see has finger like projections at the end so if i try to zoom this particular thing in just a second if i try to zoom this particular thing in you might see that there are finger like projection what do you call these finger like projections as these finger like projections are known as children fimbriae what do you call it fimbriae now what what is the characteristic feature again it is known as it is the finger like projection finger like projections i hope that is also clear yeah now after infundibulum comes a broader region a wider region okay comes a wider region what do you call this particular wider region as it has a specific name you call it ampulla what do you call it you call it ampulla so this is first part this is first a part okay it's a part of this only this is second part that is ampulla and what is that characteristic feature that you need to learn about ampulla that it is what broad or basically wide now after the ampulla comes a narrow region okay comes a narrow region that is this particular region what do you call this particular region as if you want me to color in a different color i can color it as well so it's red now yeah this particular region that you see it is known as the third region which has the narrow lumen lumen as in space inside the tube okay it has very narrow lumen and it is known as isthmus will you remember it isthmus what is a characteristic feature narrow lumen okay okay so the part closest to the uterus if this is the uterus the part closest to the uterus is isthmus the part closest to the ovary is infundibulum how can i remember this i a i can i remember and an n comes first and s comes later so this one is nearest to the ovary okay i a i i hope it is clear now what is left to do apart from this yes the length of the oviduct what is the length of the oviduct over here from here to here it is almost 10 to 12 cm long it is what 10 to 10 12 cm long and oviduct is also known as what fallopian tube clear now let's read certain things the oviducts uterus and vagina constitute the female accessory ducts keep it on hold okay i'll tell about that each fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm long and extends from the periphery of each ovary that is outside from each ovary to the uterus okay the part closer to the ovary is the funnel shaped infundibulum 
The edges of the infundibulum possess a finger-like projection. What do you call it? Fimbriae, which help in the collection of the ovum after ovulation. Yes, right. So obviously, after ovulation, when the egg comes out, so obviously, who is going to connect it? The fimbriae. Now, the infundibulum leads to a wider part of the uh, uh, oviduct, which is that ampulla. And then the last part of the oviduct is thumus has a narrow lumen and it joins to the uterus. Am I correct in every way? Everything we have done? Yeah. Now this particular point. The oviducts, the uterus and vagina constitute the female acid ducts. What do you mean by acid ducts? The things that could carry, carry the egg. Okay. Basically helps in transportation of anything. Over here, oviduct is transporting uh, the egg, right? The vagina as well as the uterus is helping transportation of what the sperm inside. So it is helping in uh, what say fertilization to happen. Also, this is the place through where the baby once if it is formed, it expels out of the female body. So this becomes the acidic ducts. Who, what all becomes the acidic ducts over here? I am just writing AD. It is what? The oviduct. Second is what? Second is what children? It is the uterus. And then we have what? The vagina. O U V. So cervix comes as a part of the uterus itself, the last part. So basically, we are not writing that. So this three three things you need to remember for acid ducts. If you are getting confused, you might lose a mark. So acid ducts are just three over here. In the case of female, that is this thing. In the case of male, what did we have? R E E V. Remember? And then also ejaculatory duct and urethra and lot of things. So please, children, be focused over here. If you want, you can take a screenshot as well. But we will be providing you the PDF of the same, anyways. Okay? So you don't need to. Worry about that. I hope this particular slide is also clear. Shall we move ahead? Shall we go ahead? So this is the picture that is given in your NCRT over here. Fimbrae is there. As you can see, infundibulum, ampulla, isthmus, all of them together becomes fallopian tube. This is the ovary. Now, just everything is a part of uterus. We'll come to that. Okay. So the next thing that we are going to study is uterus. Before that, I think there is a question. Yes. Okay. Now, this is the question that I gave you. Did you solve it? Were you able to do that? The part of the fallopian tube closest to the ovary, as we saw, the closest one was IN, right, in fundibulum. So over here, this is the correct answer. If the question was, what is the part, part that is closest to the uterus, what would have been? It would have been what? Isthmus, yes. The figure given below depicts a diagrammatic sectional view of the human female reproductive system, okay? Which set of three parts out of one to six have been correctly identified? So they're not asking you to correctly identify one to six, all the parts. Just three of them should be correct. So let's see. Over here, there are a lot of terms that you have not studied until now. That is endometrium, perimetrium, myometrium. It comes under uterus. But still, how can you solve this question? You have to go behind things that you already know. So if you see the fourth thing over here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Shaktiman. Yes. Fourth thing, do we know this? Until now, we have studied a lot of things, right? So, fourth thing, do you know? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Fimbrae. What is this particular thing? What is the part, fimbrae part of infundibulum? So, third is infundibulum. Now, if you see over here, first, second, you do not know. Okay? First and second, you do not know. Second can be confused with uterus. But, okay, there's no option like uterus over here, which is stated for second point. So, let's just drop uterus part. Now, over here, don't you know this thing? Fifth. We studied about uh, uh, what? We already studied about cervix, right? So this is the cervix and then comes the vagina. So basically, if you're sure about this, this and this, can't you just attempt this particular thing? Okay. If you see the options, the third one is the infundibulum. Fourth one is the fimbrae. And the fifth one is what? The cervix. It becomes a lot easy, right? Now, if you do not know these these options, it's okay. So sometimes with what we know, we have to, uh -huh. with what we know, we have to use that piece of information and uh, go behind that. Just a second. Yes, I hope it's clear. Now, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. What do we have? So what is the correct option? Let's take that first and then let's go ahead. So this is the correct option okay now we go ahead and this is the uh, notes for it if you want you can take a screenshot of it i'll just move aside once that is done let's go ahead what do we have we need to talk about the uterus so uterus children it is the womb of the mother 
okay when we say womb people all, mostly when i was a child even i thought that babies are found inside the stomach so it's not inside the stomach is inside the stomach probably it will be dangerous because it's still is there so it's the uterus okay it's the uterus where babies are formed it is the womb yeah now what are the different layers of the uterus you have three major layers of the uterus which helps in protection which helps in a lot of different functions we are going to talk about it one by one okay so the outermost layer that you have over here okay the outermost layer that you have over here it has a name since it is outside since it is in the periphery i use the term peri and since it is above the uterus i use the term metrium so metrium depicts the uterus so it's the perimetrium so perimetrium is that particular layer which gives the shape and structure to the uterus provides it in, provides it uh, safety in all different ways okay so it's a very uh important thing that we have over here now inside the perimetrium is another very important thing okay this is another very important thing that we have what do you call this particular layer as any guesses do you have any guesses this is the first layer now the second layer is known as myometrium what do you call it myometrium and there's a very funny way and a lame way to remember it peri peri you have in food uh, when we have some a uh, very bad food at that point of time we have peri peri uh, masala and then mayo we use mayonnaise right mayonnaise so basically you can remember like that it's not a recommend way to re recommended way to remember but obviously when biology become tubs we have to come up with some lame reasons to remember it or lame things to remember it with yeah so perimetrium and myometrium is there and myometrium children what is it made up of why it has named as mayo mayo means muscle so this particular layer that you see over here it is made up of muscle what type of muscles ma'am it is made up of what smooth muscles now why are you so specific with smooth muscles ma'am why cannot can it be why can it be some other sort of muscles like skeletal or something like that i'll tell you why so skeletal muscle is something that is in our voluntary control that is if i want to move my hand like this i can do that because it is the skeletal muscle that is present over here it is under voluntary control but if today at this point i want to tell my oh elementary canal please stop contracting and relaxing please stop doing peristalsis please uh, stop sending the foot downwards will it do that no it's not under my control and it's good that it is not under my control it's an involuntary action that our brain does okay so basically smooth muscles are muscles which does involuntary functions so wherever involuntary functions are there there you can find smooth muscles okay now myometrium has a very thick layer of smooth muscles why because during the female body obviously is uh, uh, made in a way that they can bear a baby and then expel it out right so basically during the process of expulsion that is parturition the female body undergoes rigorous that is the uterus undergoes rigorous contraction and relaxation at this point of time obviously you need smooth muscles so smooth muscles they are responsible for the contraction as well as what contraction and the relaxation of the uterus so that the baby can be expelled outside very easily now there's one more important function so you know during period cramps also uh, during period you get cramps why this is the culprit the smooth muscles over there so there are some hormonal changes that happens in our body which is why there will be cramps so that the blood that is there could be easily shut down and where from from where does this particular blood come from which is this particular layer that is what we are going to talk the next so the next layer and the most important layer among the three of them it is what i'm making it here like this okay what is this particular layer this particular layer that you see over here it is the most famous endometrium the most famous endometrium endo as an in inside and metrium as an in uterus right now what is the function of uh, the endometrium what is the function of endometrium it is the glandular layer it is filled it is richly supplied with blood vessels and all and why there is a need of blood vessels there so whenever you hear, hear the term blood vessels you obviously has to associate this thing with nourishment so this is a glandular layer and what kind of nourishment is it providing and to 
whom it is providing this particular nourishment. So basically just imagine a situation where the egg and the sperm finally came, okay, they fused, they gave the zygote, the zygote further divides and forms the embryo. Where does the embryo go? Where does the embryo go to fulfill the, all the other processes? Obviously in the uterus. Why in the uterus? Because uterus is a thing, place where it provides the nourishment. Who provides nourishment in the uterus? It's the endometrium layer. It's the endometrium layer, which is the glandular layer, which is richly supplied in blood vessels that provides nourishment to the growing embryo. Now, imagine a situation. Imagine a situation that the fertilization did not take place. At this point of time, the uterus which was prepared for the baby, which was prepared for receiving the embryo, now removes that particular layer which it made every month. So I'll tell you, I know it might be confusing, but listen to me very carefully. So the endometrium, it has two layers, okay? Endometrium, if you divide, it has two layers. One, it is the basal layer and the other one, it is the functional layer. Okay, so one is basal and the other one is functional. So this thing that you see is the basal layer, it is always there. The basal layer gives rise to the functional layer. So over here, there is functional layer which is made every month thinking that okay fertilization will happen the embryo will come there should be someone to receive the embryo and provide nourishment now if fertilization has not taken place this particular functional layer that you see sheds down through the uterus through the vagina outside the female body in the form of menstruation or periods okay i hope this is clear so endometrium is the one responsible for that okay and the basal layer, it, always, it is there always. And the functional layer, it is temporary. It goes off and comes back again every month. I hope this is also clear. Now, apart from this, as I said, in the case of females, obviously, uterus over here, this particular region that you see, it is known as the cervix, right? And in between this particular region, there's space. You call this space as what, children? You call this space as cervical canal. What do you call it? Cervical canal canal now this particular region which is the vagina the space in the vagina over here okay together the cervical canal and the vagina when it comes together you call this as birth canal they are going to form what birth canal and can you guess why is the name birth canal because through this particular region only the baby will be expelled outside i hope it is also clear so cervical canal plus vagina okay forms the birth canal now how many layers do the uh, uterus have three perimetrium outside okay myometrium middle layer it has uh, is made up of smooth muscles it helps in contraction and relaxation there's a hormone oxytocin which during parturition uh, tells the smooth muscles hey please contract so that the baby can move easily outside yeah and the innermost layer it is known as endometrium it is the glandular layer it's the most important point that i have mentioning over here now endometrium again can be divided into two layers basal layer which always remains and functional layer which is functional layer which is responsible for nourishment of the growing embryo okay i hope this is clear now let's read it okay the uterus is single and it is also called womb. The shape of the uterus is like an inverted pear. So the, if the pear, it looks like this. So if the pear, where shall I make it? Oh my God. Okay. Pear, it looks like this. Yeah. You can invert it. And now this is how the uterus looks. Okay. So it is in the shape of an inverted pear. Now going ahead, it is supported by ligaments attached to the pelvic wall. Let's keep this on hold and go ahead. The uterus opens into vagina through a narrow cervix, okay? The cavity of the cervix is known as cervical canal. Now, uh, along with the vagina, it forms the birth canal. The wall of the uterus has three layers of tissue. The external thin membranous layer is known as perimetrium. Middle thick layer, so this is thin, okay? The outermost layer is thin. The middle layer, which is made up of muscle, it has to be thick, so it is thick. And the inner layer is glandular and is known as endometrium that lines the uterine cavity. This cavity, the space that you see over here, this is the uterine cavity. Now, the endometrium undergoes cyclic changes during menstrual cycle, while the myometrium exhibits strong contraction during the, what say, delivery of the baby. Now, the point that I kept in on hold, that is, the uterus, it is supported by ligaments attached to the pelvic wall. So, let's go back to the diagram that we studied first, yeah? 
over here on this particular page no this was not the page where is the page yeah i told that this is ovarian ligament connecting ovary to the uterus then suspensory ligament connecting ovary to what the pelvic wall so there has to be someone that connects the uterus to the pelvic wall as well so that this everything remains in place right so this particular ligament no children which connects the uterus and everything to the pelvic wall what do you call this particular ligament as so since we are talking about ligament this is ligament number 1 ligament number 2 and now we are talking about ligament number 3 what is ligament number 3 children do you have any idea it looks broad so it is just broad ligament can you remember it it's the broad ligament that's all that's all so that's what they were saying so we are done with this we are done with this we are done with oviduct we are done with uterus and this is the structure of the uterus this is the uterine cavity i was talking about and this particular region at the top that you see over here it is known as uterine fundus so this upper region of the uterus is known as fundus region and since it is in the uterus you call it uterus uterine fundus now this is the cervical canal this region that you see over here this flap total flap that you see over here whole thing it is the cervix and down you have the vagina now we go ahead we solve these questions we done we are done now okay hysterectomy is a surgical removal of what tell me it is 2015 cancel question and now if you're confused i'll tell you uterus no it is also known as hystera okay now you tell me hysterectomy is a surgical removal of what it is the surgical removal of uterus okay this might have confused you but now i gave you the answer now if you want to take a screenshot of this you can definitely take the screenshot of this as well going ahead what do we have we need to talk about the external genitalia and there we are going to finish the topic of the female uh, reproductive system trust me this particular portion might have given you trouble while reading but 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 this is the easiest of all yes so let's make it simple even if if, if if you think that it's not simple let's make it simple then so the first part let's go by line by line okay the female external genitalia includes mons pubis labia majora labia minora hymen and clitoris oh my god ma'am what are you saying it's okay mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair so let's make cushion of fatty tissue so over here let's make the cushion of fatty tissue okay this is the cushion of fatty tissue and what is it covered by it is covered by skin and pubic hair so there okay just a second oh is there no option to do undo okay it's okay okay and one more very important thing before even i start with this thing that is this is a view where the female has spread her legs and that's the uh, first view that you can see over here okay now mm, okay so this is a cushion of what first thing that i'll write is fatty tissue now what is it covered with it is covered with skin and pubic hair okay and what do i call this layer as this is the first layer which i call as what mons pubis mons pubis now done imagination works here the labia majora are fleshy folds of tissue which extend down from the mons pubis and surrounds the vaginal opening so it is saying that something is extending down okay something is extending down from the mons pubis and it is around the vaginal opening so let me make the vaginal opening over here and this thing that you see over here these fleshy folds of tissue that you see over here i'll write the function characteristic feature first this is the fleshy fold of tissue 
and what is this structure known as this is known as labia majora labia as in lips so basically it looks like lips right so labia majora as in big okay now it surrounds what vaginal opening so can i write that this is vagina this is the opening of vagina okay so from here inside if you go you get the uterus and everything going ahead what do we have mm, the labia minora are paired folds of tissue under the labia majora so there is something under the labia majora as well let's see that the opening of the vagina is often okay wait the opening of this uh, vagina is often covered partially by a membrane known as hymen the clitoris okay let's come to this the clitoris is a tiny finger like structure which lies at the upper junction of the two labia minora so first thing that we need to do is what we have to make labia minora for sure so let's make labia minora let's make labia minora so over here there is a fleshy fold of tissue which is inside the labia majora this is paired fleshy fold so i'll write it paired okay as you can see paired folds of tissue so this is paired fold of tissue what is the name of it this is known as labia minora okay now the clitoris is tiny finger like structure which lies at the upper junction of the two labia minora so above this comes what clitoris what is clitoris we'll come to that okay so over here i'm just going to write that this is what clitoris okay fine now what so clitoris is lying upper junction of at, at, at the upper junction of the two labia minora above the urethral opening so urethral opening has to be somewhere around here so this thing that you see over here this is what if this is fourth this is fifth urethral opening fine now let's try to decode things if you understood this structure you will be able to understand things also we have to read it once more that's all mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue covered by skin and pubic hair cushion of fatty tissue covered by what skin and pubic hair what do you call it mons pubis the labia majora are fleshy folds of tissue which extend down from the mons pubis and surrounds the vaginal opening it is surrounding the vaginal opening this is the vagina over here okay now the labia minora are paired fold of tissue under the labia majora so this is under sorry this is under the labia majora that you see over here so this thing that you see over here is known as labia it is known as labia minora right and the opening of okay the clitoris is a tiny finger like structure this thing that you see over here it is tiny finger like structure above the two labia minora okay and which lies at the upper junction of the two labia minora above the urethral opening so what do we have we have urethral opening over here as well done are you done with this thing now there is one very important thing that is the opening of the vagina is often covered partially by a membrane called hymen so basically over here the vagina that you see it might be partially covered by a membrane and what do you call this membrane as you call this membrane as hymen is this an indicative factor of virginity the answer is no because the hymen can break the hymen it can break even during physical exercises cycling and things like that so it cannot be an indicative factor of what virginity even though it should not be a concern for anyone but still okay so this this is one very important thing that has come in need 2024 as well in the form of a, a statement question i will be showing you that question as well okay so hymen and it could be possible that even after the first coitus or the first sexual intercourse it could still remain it could still persist there so obviously it cannot be a indicative factor of what virginity i hope this is clear and now what all comes under external genitalia your mons pubis comes uh, what say labia majora labia minora clitoris as clitoris are all the regions that comes in the external genitalia i hope it is clear and if you are finding it difficult to understand the structure i'll be showing you one more picture as well okay now the hymen is often torn during the first coitus or intercourse however it can be also broken okay where is that particular bit 
okay it was written however it can be broken during the physical exercises as well okay you can read it in your ncrt it's right there it's a very important point now as i said if you're not able to understand this particular part there was a picture where is that picture yes this is the picture over here if you see this is the sagittal view as in if you cut a human being from half and put the other half side at, at one side and you see the other side you it looks like this over here the thing that is at the most back region over here what do we have this is the anal opening this is the anal opening right now in front of the anal opening what is this thing vaginal orifice or vaginal opening then comes what before vagina what was this thing urethral opening before urethral opening what do we have clitoris now yes i didn't explain about clitoris so similarly just like how males have erectile tissue okay in penis similarly in the case of females also clitoris has erectile tissue which helps in sensation during what sexual intercourse i hope that is clear now with this keep keeping this image in mind you have to remember first one clitoris second urethral opening third one vaginal opening then comes anus right now if you see this picture you might understand things lot better over here if you see this particular picture first is clitoris urethral opening and then comes vagina and then comes the anus which is i have not mentioned over here because you are talking about external genital organs okay now it's time to solve the question which is there this as i said 2024 question statement 1 the presence or absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity is it true or false it is saying the presence or absence of hymen is not a reliable indicator of virginity it is true right it is not reliable next thing the hymen is torn during the first coitus only is it like that is it con uh, sorry torn during the first uh, coitus only no it can be torn during any physical activities as well okay so obviously and it may not be torn also so this is wrong second statement is wrong so what is the correct statement over here statement 1 is true but statement 2 is false that is the first option so this is this has come in neat 2024 that is the previous year okay now going ahead okay this is something extra bartholin's glands are situated so nowhere in your ncrt you will be hearing about bartholin's gland let me tell you what is bartholin's gland so outside the vagina there will be two glands outside the vaginal opening there will be two glands which will provide secretion that helps in lubrication okay so it's on the either side of the vagina so over here bartholin's gland as you can see it is present on the either side of the vagina in the case of human beings this is the correct answer so this is something extra again i thought that i should be putting it so that you don't miss out any information now the question from the previous class so i gave you a question in the previous class and i asked you to put down your comments and everything right what is the correct answer for it seminal plasma in humans is rich in what seminal plasma what is seminal plasma if you remember if you remember what is seminal plasma the secretion of three basic uh, what's a glands right accessory glands what was it seminal vesicle then we had a uh, prostate gland then we had bulbar urethral gland all of their secretion comes to be what seminal plasma now seminal plasma plus sperm is what is what tell me semen right now they are asking you seminal plasma in humans is rich in what all things so i remember that uh, vesicle seminal vesicle gives what fructose and some enzymes okay prostate glands again what does it give calcium and clotting enzymes majorly okay majorly calcium and clotting enzymes and bulbar urethral again secretion secretion for lubrications so over here fructose and calcium but has no enzymes it cannot be true there are enzymes there is example of even one enzyme okay now glucose and certain enzyme but has no calcium obviously no okay fructose and certain enzymes but poor in calcium no 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 we have calcium so this is also wrong what is correct fructose calcium and certain enzymes 2009 question and you are done with it okay now with this thing i also wanted to add one more thing which i'll just add over here right now right away that is when we were talking about the sperm right the middle piece remember the middle piece which had a band of uh, what say mitochondria almost 25 to 35 mitochondria are there and this band is known as nibbercon band nibbercon 
band please remember this okay this is known as Nibirkan band and it has 25 to 30 mitochondria as well cool now that's all one question for my champions so you can take a screenshot of this question this came in need 2024 and i'm pretty sure you will be able to answer this is so easy so easy and it's easy because you studied right it wouldn't have it would not have been easy if you have not studied so obviously it's the result of your efforts that that is going to show up right so that's all children i thank you for cooperating with me for being with me for seeing the video it will be really helping you so nicely and uh, also one more thing we are launching npl that is neat premier league series where you will be getting 30 questions on sunday okay so you will get in the morning and then you have to try for your own self that is the first priority that you need to do okay so apart from the five questions that you are getting daily you will getting 30 more questions which will be from the topics that we have just covered so be prepared for that and at that point of time you do not have to look at any books refer to any books or notes nothing it's just all about you all about what you remembered so if you're liking this particular series do not forget to comment it down and also if you're liking the whole channel and what we are trying to do for you please do not forget to subscribe